Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokta. Something is very wrong in this country, in Malaysia. People die violent deaths. An investigation is carried out, but the inquiries lead nowhere. Worse still, no one is found guilty. Now just imagine if you are the parents of the people who have died. Where is the closure? So what's happening here? Who is at fault? Is someone with powerful connections being protected? Is it negligence on the part of the various institutions or the authorities? Who will provide the answers? The politicians who can do something to get things moving are quiet. Why? Do they know that to dig deeper means that they will open a can of worms? So what's happening? T. Naveen and S. Vinosini are two young adults who had everything to live for. Both are Indian, both had bright futures, but their lives were cut short when they died under mysterious circumstances. Both adults have no connection or family ties to one another, but they have one thing in common, and that is the manner in which their families are left waiting for answers about their children's death. Why are the authorities dragging their feet about these investigations? Is it incompetence? Shoddy investigations? Have they something to hide? Or all of the above? Years after their deaths, their parents are still in the dark about their children's deaths. Where is the closure for them and their families? Why is it so difficult to get answers from the authorities? Where is the accountability? What can we learn from their deaths? Who was, was responsible for these deaths? And how can we make society a safer place for all? There may well be others who died in similar circumstances, but these two have been singled out because their deaths received intense public scrutiny. These two young people were struck down in the prime of their lives. Both were pursuing an education so that they could contribute to society, gain the necessary skills, improve their future career prospects and help their families. The first is T. Naveen from Penang and he was only 18 years old when he died in 2017. He had allegedly been set upon late at night by bullies from his former school. By day, Naveen worked in a shop to help make ends meet and to gain extra pocket money. He was looking forward to college life and he was due to leave for KL for the next phase in his life. Naveen's friends and former teachers said that he was a quiet and good-natured young man but that he had been a frequent target for bullies. This begs the question. How is bullying dealt with in our schools? There are many allegations that school bullying is rampant and alarmingly on the rise. Anyone who is deemed to be different or boys who exhibit feminine traits are heavily teased or bullied. In Naveen's case, the taunting spilled over into his private life. Two of his former perpetrators had left the school. Sadly, both teachers and the victims of bullying are reluctant to report cases of bullying. The teachers are afraid of becoming the new target, whilst the victims fear the torment worsening for daring to report the bullying. Last month, five men were acquitted of killing Naveen. Arun Dorasami, the chairman of the Naveen Action Investigation League, or NAIL, NAIL, said that the family accepted the High Court judge uh, Radzi Hamid's decision that the prosecution had failed 
to prove that was that there was a prima facie against all five accused. It was alleged that Naveen and his friend T. Praveen were buying burgers in Jalan Kaki Bukit in Bukit Gelugo when the five accused beat them up. Praveen managed to escape and Naveen was later found unconscious in a field with serious injuries including burns on his back and signs that a blunt object had been shoved into his anus. Justice Radzi said that the court found conflicting versions in the witness statements and the failure of the prosecution to determine if Naveen had died as a result of blunt force trauma to the head, as stated in the post-mortem report, or whether it was due to an existing illness. Incredibly, the doctor treating Naveen had not been called to testify. Why? In addition, Radzi said that Praveen's testimony, which was given to police soon after the incident, contradicted the report, which he lodged four years later. Justice Radzi added that the police had failed to conduct investigations into these cases fairly. He also said that the prosecution had also failed to call in other corroborating witnesses to support Praveen's testimony in court. Arun said that the family would file a civil suit against the Penang Hospital and the police for failing to present the necessary evidence during the trial. The other adult, the second uh, person, young person, whose death could have been prevented is S. Vinosini, a second-year Bachelor of Accounting undergraduate at University Uttara Malaysia, UUM. Her lifeless body was found in her dormitory by her roommate and this was in May 2022, just a week after term had started. Finosini looked forward to being back on campus after the lockdown caused by the coronavirus pandemic. She had allegedly been electrocuted. Now on 3rd October, Last month, the Alostar High Court ordered the police and federal government 14 days to hand over medical, chemist, police reports and all photographs taken in the course of investigation into Vinosini's death. Hand them over to her family. The family's counsel, M. Manoharan, confirmed that the Alostar High Court decision and said that Justice Mahazan Mattaib had allowed the discovery application by Finosini's father, um, who is R. Siva Kuma, to prepare the main negligence lawsuit over his daughter's death. Would the outcome have been different and faster if these two young adults were from prominent families? Or have all Malaysians been failed by the system which needs urgent reform and a massive shake-up with regards to how they conduct their investigations. Where is the political will by the relevant ministries to address these very serious issues? Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.